Ellen Susan with the Sacramento History Museum here today and I want to start by apologizing. We've had a really crazy day at the museum and I completely forgot to bring my lapel mic that would make it a lot easier for you to hear me. So I'm just going to be like shouting into the, the uh, camera today and Allie's going to be up close to me. So again, I really apologize, um, but hopefully I can talk nice and loud and no loud car goes by and if one does I will start over. <laughs> okay. Um, so today we are talking about a couple of places in Old Sacramento that if you're just walking around you probably think it's a park, it's a green space, it's just kind of a forgotten space where there are no buildings. But it's not forgotten. It has such a long history and there's so many interesting things that are hidden in these places that now we just kind of walk by and we, we don't, don't see it for what it used to be. So we are starting here and this is, uh, the address is 123 J Street. The museum has, <coughs> excuse me, a uh, opportunity now to activate this area, which is very exciting. And again, it just kind of looks like a park that is sunken deep down into old Sacramento, but it has a great history to it. Um, it was once the Magnolia Saloon, and the Magnolia Saloon was this like kind of infamous place actually in Sacramento's history. When it was first built, it was owned by, let me get his name, because it's kind of funny, Benjamin Franklin Baldy Johnson. Baldy is his nickname. I'm going to call him that because that's his nickname. So Baldy, he owned this place and um, he uh, sold it almost right away. He, he ended up building it in the spring of 1850, I want to say. No, I'm sorry, 1851, excuse me. And so he bought this uh, land in 1851. He built the Magnolia Saloon and he actually sold it at the end of 1851 to Arnold and company or uh, I don't know, different owners, right? And I have here um, a couple of different like news articles I found. Dissolution of co-partnership. This was when um, these things were kind of sold. And so I've got really great uh, information about, you know, Arnold and Barker, excuse me, there it is. Arnold and Barker, I've got the primary source right there on who he sold it to. Now, unfortunately, this was sold in uh, 1851, at the end of 1851. And in 1852, there was the Great Conflagration in Sacramento, which uh, means that there was a huge fire. And a lot of the buildings in old Sacramento actually burned down. One that didn't was the Lady Adams building that you learned about last week because it was made out of brick. Now, we've been looking a lot at the buildings in old Sacramento this month about the ones that have been reconstructed or rebuilt or aren't here at all, right? So this building, unfortunately, it did, um, it caused, actually I had an, another newspaper article that told me it had $10,000 worth of damage. And um, um, the, the owners, it seemed like, couldn't really recover from that. The items that were in here, the, the different, um, I don't know, informational things. There's a story that actually was moved to the next place that we're going to go and kept there in the meantime until it was, um, until it was rebuilt. But it wasn't rebuilt until they sold it back to Baldy. <laughs> they actually sold this building or back to Baldy, who put a lot more money into it, not just $10,000, but he made it a lot bigger actually. And that was really when it became the Magnolia Saloon. Now, like I said, we have the chance at the museum to kind of activate this space now, and we've been really debating about what to call it, to say, hey, if you want to go and do something, go to the Magnolia something. So that doesn't quite make sense for what we want it to be. We've talked about Magnolia Park. Um, turns out there's a different Magnolia Park in Old Sacramento, or in Sacramento, and so we don't people want people to go to the wrong place. So we've talked about maybe the Magnolia Gulch. <laughs> we fondly call it the pit. <laughs> so there's actually a lot of different ones. We haven't come up with a great name yet, but uh, we'll get there, I'm sure. For now, I kind of call it 123 J Street or the Magnolia, but that's a little bit hipstery for what we're going for too. So um, Baldy bought it. He actually constructed a um, brick building. And I have here, this is the 1853 Sacramento, 1853 to 54 Sacramento directory. I have here well, the, um, the advertisement for the Magnolia at number 23 J Street. They had different kind of addresses back then, but it's 123 now. And you can see in all caps, 
fireproof brick building. This was a huge deal. And in fact, throughout this, you can see a lot of the different places. That's a huge um, thing that they put on their advertisements, fireproof brick building. So you know that when you either have an office here or business dealings or just a place to stay, you're gonna be safe because it's fireproof now. And I, I think that kind of shows how big a deal that fire really was because it's, it's in like all of the advertisements for these um, buildings. Now the Magnolia um, was known for keeping refreshments really, really cold by snow that they obtained from the Sierra Mountains that would be, uh, I was gonna say truck down, that's not quite, quite right, <laughs> would be sent down by wagons. And that was what they were kind of known for was to keep all their refreshments in snow. So I think that's really cool too. Just a little fun fact about the Magnolia. Um, another fun fact about the Magnolia was that it was this like, epicenter for politics in early Sacramento history. There are some really cool accounts of like shady dealings that went on in the Magnolia. And it reminds me of the uh, Hamilton song, The Room Where It Happened, because the Magnolia was the room where it happened. A lot of these kind of behind the scenes, backdoor dealings uh, that had that pertained to politics happened here at the Magnolia, which was the headquarters for um, a ton of the, the politics in our city's or our, our state's capital. So that's pretty cool too. The Magnolia was was that place. Now um, I found other. I went through a lot of rabbit holes when I was like looking up the history of these places because it's tough, right? I'm looking at um, you know an empty space and I'm trying to find a history of this empty space, but I have not a lot to go on just by looking at it. Um, and one of the things I found was another newspaper article, and it's actually kind of a sad one, but I love it because it's such a great, like, it tells a great story of the history of our city, where there was an advertisement put out in the newspaper, where a gentleman had been walking from um, Front and K Street, so about a block and a half that way, and somewhere along the way, he lost his uh, purse full of gold dust and he was headed to the Magnolia, and he put out an award, a reward, please help me find my purse full of gold dust. Um, unfortunately, I did not find whether he was successful or not. I have a feeling he probably wasn't, that whoever found a purse full of gold dust said, this is my lucky day, and carried on with their day. But just things like that, that have the Magnolia in it. There's a lot of history here, and a lot of good stories, and gold stories, and. Yeah, it's the it's the it's the magnolia. So this is uh, next time you're in Old Sacramento. I hope you come in and look here. Now I have um, a couple pictures of what the building not didn't necessarily look like at the time, but definitely what it evolved into by the time redevelopment was happening in the 1950s, 60s, 70s in Old Sacramento. I I'm just not sure if this was uh, still a building, if it had kind of crumbled and fallen apart. I do have a picture from this one. Doo -doo -doo. Uh, I'm not sure. From the early 1900s, there's a uh, automobile there, but it's clearly a very old model. There's another one there, um, and this building right here is 117 J Street. I think we'll try and end on the other side of the road so that you can get a good view on what this really looked like. This is 117 J Street, and this is the building next to it that is this building here. Right here. But the windows don't match. This part right here is what I'm looking at. So the facade doesn't match, the windows don't match, and I just have a lot of questions about what this was. What is this building? I have so many questions. Um, I think it would be a really good master's thesis. If anybody is interested in doing that, please research and get back to me because I have so many questions. However, in the 1950s and, and then 60s, when uh, the redevelopment was happening down here, there were pictures taken of the buildings that were uh, in this area. We've used them a lot during this month. Um, here's a picture of that building off to our right. So this here is the Magnolia Gulch, <laughs> we'll call it. The building over there, again, we'll try and cross the street a little bit and um, show you that. Here though, I can see this is a gulch. This is definitely a pit right there. It has cars parked in it. So what happened between that last picture and this one? I know for sure that that last picture is 117 J Street. I know for sure that this picture is that building. What happened? I don't know. Um, but yes, if you end up wanting you know, a master's thesis or something, please research this and let me know. All right, so we're gonna move across the street to 
Pioneer Park. Now, I think this one, uh, more people do engage with it. You can actually get down into it. The, the gulch over there, you can't really, you can't go down into it. Hopefully that will change as we, uh, as we can do more with it. But the Pioneer Park, I think, is a favorite one to go into. We're going to watch out for horseless carriages. Then we'll go down in the Pioneer Park to get an idea. So we'll look at these pictures. Sorry, I walk really fast. <laughs> so you can actually get the, um, the angle of where these are. Alright, maybe like right here. You can kind of see. So this building here is this brick building on the corner. Right there. That one. And then the one next to it, which again, the windows don't match up. I have so many questions. Is this building here? That building, there we go. But but maybe more. I'm just not sure. I have so many questions. <laughs> but the addresses match up at least. And then of course we have this building, which we know for sure is this one to the right of the Magnolia Gulch. Ooh. That one. Boop, boop. <laughs> so, yeah, we know that between those two, something happened. It's possible that the building fell apart or collapsed or something like that. All right, let's stand in front of Pioneer Park here. I've got more pictures. I love pictures. They really help me visualize what this place used to look like. So, right here in front of Pioneer Park, and let's maybe come out. This was actually the, um, the meat market for a while. It became the city market. And this is the earliest picture that I could find of it. It was in 18, oh gosh, uh, 62, I think. Oh, forget, but yes, 1862, I have it written down somewhere. So that's the earliest like drawing of it. And that was here in this spot. Now, again, during redevelopment, it changed quite a bit. So we have that cute little Sacramento City Market right there and then we've got what it became which is a four-story building that towered over the buildings next to it there aren't like four-story buildings around here there's three stories so this one was way bigger and I love this picture too because if you look really closely there's a person sitting in there he's got his arm up like it's like he's resting on something and I don't know I just love that where it's like a business or something was happening still so they took a picture of this and again this I think was um, okay well what do we do with these buildings do we reconstruct it do we um, redevelop it what what should we do here well I read an account that said that this building actually started to collapse I'm not sure that that's a hundred percent true uh, I, I need to confirm that but we do know that for whatever reason they decided to get rid of the building completely it's not here anymore it's now Pioneer Park so it went from this enormous four-story building that just towered above everything else to a lovely park for us to enjoy and let's go enjoy it we're actually gonna go in you can probably see that this staircase is now like condemned so we can't go down that unfortunately but that's okay we can take it in a different way so as we are walking we are going down to the original level of the city before the buildings were raised levees were raised and everything. So <laughs> we're going down into again another pit kind of, but this one actually has a name, Pioneer Park. Now the columns you see here probably are not original to this site. They probably are original to Old Sacramento and maybe different buildings that were around here, but they again were probably placed down here as sort of a place to I don't know, keep some of the special things uh, that they discovered or rediscovered during the redevelopment phase of Old Sacramento. So again, that poor staircase, something bad happened to it. <laughs> We're not allowed on it, uh, but that's okay. So this was the um, city market in the 1800s, in the 1850s and 1860s. Um, it was originally a butcher shop. I found a ton of advertisements of like fresh meat and things that you could come down here for. It was owned by Pierce, Burns, and Company. And 
that's kind of also if you are interested in researching this, start with those names because I, I again, like I said, I went down a lot of rabbit holes where I tried to find like their graves and I'm like, what happened to these people? And there's just there's just too many people with those last names. It's really frustrating. <laughs> so again, if you want to research more, you can do this. Um, so the 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 cast iron um, columns, though, like I said, they probably weren't here originally. We do have some information. There used to be a, uh, like a placard that is no longer here, but I have a picture of it of what it was that described it a little bit more. Um, you know, they're decorative columns that were moved here. Can you find clues on the columns that tell you when they were made? Well, yes, we can. Come on here. <laughs> so. but not all of them. Down here it says um, 1869, but it says like Iron Works Company or, or something like that. So there are clues around here as to when these uh, columns were put in. And pictures I saw other ones. But then there also are these huge slabs of granite, the Folsom Quarry granite slabs. And again, I think they're placed here for whatever reason. Um, and then kind of a, the last thing that we like to point out here in Pioneer Park is this arch over here. Now, this whole wall is like one of the best and one of the things that makes me the most angry <laughs> because people uh, vandalize it. They put their names on it. That's never okay. This is a historic district. Don't put your name on it. And over there, we won't get too close. But somebody put like their Instagram handle on there. Don't do that. We can find you and we know who you are and I will be very angry at you forever. So, um, but over here where the brick is still exposed, there's a story that goes along with that arch. And the story is that it used to be a pathway, a walkway between the two buildings for um, the owners or the, the public to go through. But the buildings were actually raised at different times and so it became obsolete. They bricked it in. Now I did find um, one of the articles said that the city market building was actually never raised and that they ended up just plopping another, you know, couple of stories on top of the original, but they never actually even attempted to raise it. So that would cause some issues as well, I imagine, with entryways and walkways. Um, and then like we, like we know, it, it's not here anymore, it, it collapsed. So. Um, yeah, it's just kind of an interesting history. I hope that when you come down to Old Sacramento, this whole month what we've been talking about what, what these buildings have been through over time. And it, we're just scratching the surface. Like there's so many more stories that we can tell here. But I hope that the next time you come down here, you can look around and, and maybe have a better understanding of some of the, the work and the, the reasons why that they changed a lot of the, um, the facades and the, the buildings down here. So we've really enjoyed doing this and I hope you have too. Next week it is story time. So uh, please join us next week as well. And then we'll be on to a different topic. Stories on the river actually is for next month. So join us for that too. Thank you. Bye.